Hey everybody, it's OC back again. I'm going to uh, today take a time to show you all about theoretical stoichiometry. What a great name, stoichiometry. But hey, it's, uh, it's what we call it. It's just a, uh, a name that describes that there are relationships between what you put into things and what you get out. Okay, and so today let me just walk you through the whole idea and do a few problems with you so you have an idea what's going on here. So you've been working with chemical equations so far, and chemical equations are ratio equations. So they tell us information about like how much of this do you put in and how much of that do you get out and what ratio should I put in. You've never done it like that so far, probably because you never thought of it like that, but that's a whole balancing process. So Let's first think about it in a real world uh, situation. Right here, I have, you know, I have a good old fashioned recipe to make one nine inch pie. Okay? So I have this nine inch pie here, and I want to be able to make it. So what's it take? Okay, well, it takes two eggs. It takes half a cup of packed brown sugar. It takes one cup of chopped nuts. Those are all ratios. You're just ratioing how much egg you need to how much chopped walnuts you need. You're ratioing how much brown sugar you need to how much walnuts you need. And all this ratios to one nine inch pie. So you could write a whole bunch of ratios here. We could say for every two eggs, you will require one half of a cup of brown sugar. And again, just like we'd say in dimensional analysis, you could have written that the other way. One half of a cup of brown sugar, mm, brown sugar, uh, over top of two eggs. And you might say, well, where did I get that ratio from? Because people are like, oh my God, where did it come from? It came from this recipe. See, there's two eggs and one half a cup of brown, brown sugar. Okay? So that's just all it says. All right? Um, you could say a lot more of this. I mean, it's so many things we can say. For instance, uh, I could ratio it to what we make. So something else I could say is we'll take the chopped walnuts and ratio it to the 9-inch pie. So I could say, oh, okay, well, let's make, we need one cup of chopped walnuts for every one uh, nine pie. Uh, I won't say inch, just to save myself some time. And again, I could then, you know, rate, I could switch those up and down from each other. Okay? And that's all stoic is. Stoic is about ratioing that stuff. And it's just like these recipes you see here. It's no different. The only thing that seems a little odd is, what if you got to do more or less than that? Like, this makes one nine-inch pie. What if I want to make one and a half nine-inch pies? Well... That's it. You know, in, in baking, you're just like, okay, well, I need to make one and a half, so I'll multiply everything by one and a half. That's, that's true. I mean, essentially, you could say, for every one, I want to make one and a half nine-inch pies. <laughs> Nips. Anyway, um, so, uh, so then what I'll do is, um, then I'll take, uh, say that, okay, well, you know, you're, you're like, oh, I'll multiply it by one, you know, multiply everything by 1.5, but why do you multiply one at 1.5? Well, dimensional analysis shows us why. So, I want to know how many eggs I need to buy now. Well, I know for every one nine-inch pie, I'll, I'll need two eggs. And then I just see nine-inch pies, cancels out, and I'm left with egg. Isn't that great? I mean, that's, that's amazing. I mean, that's all you've done. And that's what chemical stoichiometry is all about. So it's not much different. And if you keep that idea, that concept in your head, this will make a lot more sense, okay? So let's take a look at uh, a chemical equation. What can that tell us, okay? Well, let's look at a chemical equation. So, oh God, this is so different than a recipe. Wait, no it isn't. It is a recipe. It's just a chemical recipe. So what can I say from this? Well, I know for every two moles of Fe2O3, I will require three car moles of carbon. So these are just mole ratios. These numbers in the front are just mole ratios for things that we're doing. So that's all you got to read them as, mole ratios. That's it. 
And of course, you could write this upside down. I could say for every three moles of carbon, that'll that'll make uh, I'll, I'll I'll need two moles of Fe2O3. And I can say so much more. There's so many ratios from this reaction. In fact, how about we relate carbon to the iron I'll make? Oh my God. He's a crazy man, going from the reactant side to the product side. We did that with the 9-inch pie a second ago. I said, hey, 9-inch pie is what we make. It's what you yield. And I said, oh, okay, well, if I want to make one and a half 9-inch pies, I could change that. And how did I do that? Well, I know one 9-inch pie makes two eggs. So it, it's not really crazy. It's, it's something we can do. So here we can go. I can say for every three moles of carbon that will make four moles of iron. And again, just like any ratio, I could have reversed the way I said that. For every four moles of iron that I want to make, you know, so you could just say it a little differently, this will require three moles of carbon. Same thing, okay? So there's lots of, lots of uh, ratios, and technically there's four factorial ratios here, because uh, you can go from, you know, essentially what you can do is, uh, you can go from this to this, 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 this to this. You can go from this to this. You can go from this to this. You can go from this to this, this to this, this to this. I mean, there's so many ratios you got here, okay? That's four factorial. Anyway, so uh, n no one's going to question you on how many factorial that is. Anyway, so that's all we're going to do is just use these mole ratios, okay? But you're like, oh, my God, in the lab, we can't measure out moles. We don't usually measure out moles. We don't have that magical mole device. We're not like, oh. This is my magical mole device. You're like, no, it doesn't work that way. So in the lab, our most common use for finding out amounts is what? That thing that's got a T on it, and you hit it before you put anything on it, and it's got lots of numbers on it. I know what you're thinking. It's the balance. So we usually mass things out, okay? Well, let's think about this. Is there like a basically a way we can get between grams of a substance and the moles there are? Grams, moles, grams, moles. Oh, whoa. That sounds like molar mass. Now we've done that before. Molar mass. We can get molar masses of compounds. In fact, we did a chapter where you could relate. You, you know, your idea was a mole is a central idea for element or compound X. Okay. It, this is not the Powerpuff Girls X. It's not Chemical X. Okay? So anyway, uh, and there's this idea that you could say, okay, you can convert between moles and the number of atoms or molecules. Again, what you call it is dependent on uh, what actual type of thing it is. Or it could be formula units. Okay? It could be anything like that. So um, those are um, th those are way we relate. And relate that through Avogadro's number. 6.022 um, times 10 to the 23rd, whatever you're talking about per mole, okay? And this will get you to atoms and molecules or forming units of X, okay? So how would I get, can I get anywhere else from this? Well, yeah, we could get to grams of X. And we use that by using the number of grams that are in one mole, which we call this molar, molar mass okay oh my god molar mass so if we want to do molar mass here that we get that off the periodic table you know if it's a compound we add them up all right but you're like wait how does this relate to stoichiometry we have two different compounds here oh well we have a different compound well if you have moles of y again you can get between atoms of y using avo's number Whee! And then we'll just call this, you know, atoms. Or this could be molecules. Uh, or it could be formula units. Whatever. Of Y. Okay? The crazy thing is, this is a constant. It doesn't matter if it's Y, X, Z, or donkeys. Um, it's always going to be Avogadro's number. If I want to get between grams of Y and moles of Y, well, it's the same idea. I still need the number of grams that are in one mole of Y, well, that's the molar mass of Y. And again, you do the same thing to figure it out, you just add stuff up. Great! But you're like, wait, these are two separate maps here. You know, you're like, wait, this, this will get me between X 
and stuff in X, this will get me between Y and Y. And again, what's X and Y? Well, in the last problem, it could be, what if I wanted to go between iron 2 oxide and iron? Okay, so iron 2 oxides are X, and iron's my Y, what you call X and Y, is whatever, it doesn't matter. So the thing is, how do you cross this bridge? It's like a river. It's like a river of nothingness. You're like, I don't see how these relate. And it's like, lo, 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 lo. And you're like, oh, here I am. I want to get across this river. How do I get across? Oh, no. Uh oh, wait a second. Wait, what did we just learn? In any equ if you have a balanced chemical equation, what are these numbers again? What's that number mean to like that number? That's right. It's the mole ratio. It's the ratio between one compound or atom to another species. Ah! So that's a way we can cross this river of, oh my God! So we just cross this river because, see, this river actually doesn't exist. We don't have a problem. Yeah, see, I can get through it. So we cross it by using the mole ratio from the equation. So you got to have an equation to do it. It's like saying you want to bake, it would be like making that pie a little bit ago and not having a, a recipe for it. How the heck would you get ratios if you don't have a recipe for it? Okay, so you got to have a balanced chemical equation. All right, and so this guy, he's not Mr. Question Mark. He's Mr. Oh, crap, we don't want to lose Mo Mo Um, He's Mr. Happy now. He's like, happy, happy, yay. Okay, so you just got to use a mole ratio. And this is your mind map. This is how you do, and almost any theoretical stoic is done this way. You're like, well, what do you mean there's like six different ways to go? Well, it's just like anything else. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to go? And that tells you everything, okay? So keep this in mind because this is like a key way to get that brain thinking, okay? So let's take a look at a problem and see what's going to happen here. Okay, and we're going to reference that, that mind map a few times. So, if I have 3.426 grams of iron 3 oxide, that's that stuff right there. How many moles of iron would we produce? Okay, fair question, fair question. So, we're going to start with grams of iron 3 oxide. So, if we think back to our mind map, we'll call X in this case. X will be our... Fe2O3, okay, and we're going to start here, so we're going to start there in grams of that compound, and then it said it wanted moles of Fe, so I want to end in moles of the other compound, so we're going to call Y, Y is going to be our Fe, and I want to end just in the moles, so here's where I want to end. Okay, so we got we can only use these arrows to get between things. Since there's no arrow that goes between these two directly, like I don't see an arrow. Do you see an arrow? If you drew an arrow there, I don't know what you did. You were watching some other video. You probably saw some funny cat video, and you just started letting draw on whatever you want. Get back to this one right here. There's no arrow here. So what you need to do is you need to go. Uh, you need to first t travel from grams of x to moles of x using the molar mass route. You got to travel that road. And then you go from moles of x to moles of y by using the mole ratio from the equation. And then you'll end there. That's where you'll end. So let's try it out. So I always start with our given. So our given here is 342.6 grams of Fe2O3. People always ask me if I need to actually write what I, the Fe2O3, and the answer is you should. Because otherwise, you're going to be going from moles to moles and grams to grams, and you're actually, am I in grams of, of iron or iron three oxide or am I in grams of donkeys? I don't know. Uh, oh, wait, where's that funny cat video again? Wait, no, 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 don't go there again. Okay, so yeah, you should write it, okay? So, so that's where we start. Now, what do we do now? So I'm starting here. So I want for, to get to here, I need to use the molar mass. So what I want to do is get the molar mass of Fe2O3. Uh, so we'll look up the molar mass of iron. Iron is, oh, let's see, 55.845, if I remember. Oh, 847. Gosh, OC, you are losing your stuff, man. Okay. And uh, oxygen is, for pretty much all intents and purposes, 16.00. So uh, we're going to multiply this by 2, this by 3. So that's going to give us 48 on this. This is going to give us about... One, 
uh, 16, 111, I should say, point, uh, 0.7 when we round grams per mole. Okay, maybe I should check that real quick with my own calculator. So 55.847 times 2. Yeah, 111.7 I think is pretty good, especially since we're using 48. So we're going to add in 48 to that, and we're going to end up with 159.7, okay, grams in a mole. So where do you put grams at, and where do you put moles at? Uh, again, let dimensional analysis guide you on your way. So grams of Fe203 is here, so i got to cancel it out, which means it's got to be on the bottom of here. Grams of Fe203. And since we're using molar mass, it's always grams per mole. So that means the mole has got to be on the other side of this conversion. It's always per one mole. Molar mass is always per one mole. And the molar mass goes right here. So we're going to use the 159.7 here. 0.7 grams per mole. And this is Fe203. Not finished yet. You're like, wait, wait, why do I have equals here? Well, you're not finished. You, you still got this road to go. So we're going to take this road now, okay? So now we want to use the mole ratio from the equation, okay? So we have an equation here. And this equation says for every two moles of iron three oxide we use, we'll create th four moles of iron. Okay, so write that ratio out if you still have trouble seeing that. For every two moles of F e two o three, we will make four moles of F e. Again, you can flip that if you need to. Don't ever conversions are always flippable. Now you can't change the numbers, you can't change the units, but they're flippable. Okay. So on this one, we want moles of F e two o three are here. Okay. These grams have canceled out, so we need moles of F e two o three down here. F e 203. Okay. And since I use this on the bottom, I'm gonna have to put that on the top. So mole, mole, uh, Austin Power, sorry. Uh, of Fe. Okay. And the numbers stick with the unit. So the four was with the moles of Fe, the two is with the moles of Fe203. Okay. And now moles of Fe203 cancel out. And we want the moles of Fe. Well, that's what I have right now. Equals time. BAM! Problem finished. And so what you would now do is grab your calculator and calculate it out. So you do 342.6, divide by things that are on the bottom, so divide by 159.7, and multiply by 4, divide by 2. So I end up with 4.291 moles of Fe. Bam. Direct sig figs. Bam! That's how we do it. Okay? So, we started in grams. Okay? Started in grams. Here we did. Start in grams. Then, we use the molar mass to get to moles. Molar mass. Orient it properly to get rid of our units and introduce a new unit. Then, use mole ratio from the equation to get from X to Y. And so, we went from X to Y. Okay, mole ratio, All right? Keep that in your head, and you'll be good. All right, let's do another one. All right. So, try. let's try to do this one. We want to produce that many grams of iron. How many grams of carbon are going to be needed? You're like, oh, oh, wait, we're, gonna, we're starting here at the end? Well, it's just like saying you want to make five pies. That's like starting at the end, right? Like, when you're like, oh, I want to make five pies. Oh, yeah. Well, you can go backwards, right? We can do go, go backwards. You want to make that much iron. Okay. How much carbon am I going to need to go buy or something like that is what I'm asking. I'm just asking how many grams do I need. Okay. So I have 853 grams of iron. Okay. So I'm going to 853 grams of iron. And I want to get to grams of carbon. Now, let's go look at our mind map again. Make sure we're okay here. So in this case, um, we're starting in grams of iron. And we want to end in, uh, our Y here is carbon, okay? So we're starting in grams still. This time we want to end in grams of carbon. So we want to end here, not here, okay? So we're going to be taking a long pathway here. 
Okay, because there ain't no there's no line here. Okay, now you advanced students, but there's no line here for us. Okay, so uh, we got to We got to travel the length of the land through all of you know uh, eastern kingdoms and all you know. We're gonna be the hobbits going on a quest. Uh, I just mixed a WoW reference with. Uh, don't worry about it. Anyway, so first thing we need to do is molar mass. Okay, so all right. We gotta have grams down here and moles up here, because we want to use molar mass, and the molar mass of iron is 50. Well, that is a really crappy 50. Oop! I also got rid of my multiplies too. Okay, uh, 55.847 grams of iron are in one mole of iron. That comes from the periodic table. So, uh, 55.8 Four seven for every one mole, and I better put what this is. This is Fe, and that's Fe right there. Fe, okay. We're not finished yet because I just all I did was take this bridge over to moles. Mole ratio time. So now we need a new mole ratio. Oh my God, where did I get a new one from? Well, it's the same equation. We just got to go from a different compound to a different one. So now I'm going from iron to carbon. So it's a four to three ratio. Four moles. So four moles of iron for every three moles of carbon. Okay? So where's moles of iron got to go? Where's it got to go? Moles of iron. Where are we going to put the label? Moles of iron. See it there. So that means I want to cancel it. So I want to put moles of iron here. I hope that's what you were thinking. That's what you need to be thinking. Hey, you know, we got to cancel units out. And so if I'm going to use the moles of iron from this, then the moles of carbon got to go on top. And then the, the numbers just follow. So four goes with the iron, three with the carbon. And we're not finished yet. You're like, oh, gosh, more math. Yeah, you can do it, man. Hang tough. You can do it. So we just converted from moles of X to moles of Y. Time to go from moles of Y to the grams, which is our end. So now we need the molar mass of carbon in this case. Okay? So we look on the periodic table. We find that the molar mass of carbon is 12.011 grams of carbon for every one mole. And again, where are you going to put the moles here? Don't tell me you're going to go find them in the ground. Where are you, where are you going to put the moles? Because you see it here. Yeah, down here. So moles of carbon, one. And then 12.011 grams of carbino. And moles cancels. Everything, every unit's canceled except for the grams of carbon, which is good. That's what we want. And now it's just calculated time. Stupid stuff. So, again, multiply by things on the top. So, 853 divided by 55.847 because it's on the bottom. Times by 3. Divide by 4 on the bottom. Times by 12.011. And you should end up with 137. Well... With sig figs, 138 grams of carbino. Carbon. I shouldn't say carbino. Okay. And that's how you do it. But honestly, don't get much harder than that. Okay. Um, I provided a few extra problems here for you to do. Actually, just one extra problem. So I would suggest right now that you stop the video or pause it and then try it. Okay. And then I'm going to work it right now and then do it. So pause right now so you don't keep going and try it yourself. Okay, because I'm just going to keep doing it. It's going to be like a second to me, but it might be a few minutes for you because you got to pause and do it. So do it. Don't go watch no cat videos either. All right, you're back. Okay, if you're back, you're ready. If you just if you didn't pause, you're you're not helping yourself. You got to try it. Okay. All right. So uh, we the reactions carried out and they made that many grams of carbon dioxide. And how many grams of iron were also produced? Oh, this is like CSI. We're trying to figure it out, okay? Um, so anyway, uh, it's still just a story. We want to go from that to uh, that. 
that's not a problem. Okay. So we want to start with 320.1 grams of carbon dioxide. And now we need to go from grams to moles. So there are 44.01, oh, no 0.1 grams of carbon dioxide in one mole of carbon dioxide. Okay. We right, so that gets our grams going. Now we need a mole ratio. So for every three moles of carbon dioxide, remember it comes from the equation, three moles of carbon dioxide. I want to go to iron, so four moles of iron. All right. And now I want to get grams of iron. So for every one mole of iron, that's 55.847 grams of iron. And that comes from the periodic table. So when we do all this math in the calculator, so 320.1 divided by 44.01 times by 4, it's on the top, divide by 3 times 55.847, get up with 500. 41.6 grams. So let me write that down there. 541.6 grams of iron. Okay. Moles canceled. Moles of carbon dioxide cancel, and the grams already canceled. The only unit we had left at that point was grams of iron. Okay. I hope you got that. All right. Because it's just this mind map idea. And if you keep the relationships in your head, you won't memorize five or six different ways to do the problems. Because some people are taught that there's like mole to mass, mass to moles, moles to grams, moles to grams to moles, moles to atoms, blah, 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 blah. But it's not. If you keep this map in your head, that ooh, I went by. If you keep this map in your head and you just say, hey, X and Y or whatever I want them to be, then, and you just know where you want to start, where you want to end, then it's actually pretty darn easy, okay? Um, it just takes some practice, all right? So I hope this was helpful for you. If it's not, you know, please let me know. Shoot me an email. I'll be happy to try to, to rectify any problems for you. And uh, my next video is going to be on limiting reactant stoichiometry, which is what do you do when you have multiple uh, values for, like, how many reactants you have? Ooh, boogeyman. Eh, it's not much harder. Just longer. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time, okay? Have a good one. Later.